All right, team, with us for the first time here on the Buck Sexton Show, we are joined by the one and only Bill O'Reilly. He's got a new book out, Killing Crazy Horse, like all the others. I'm sure going to be a huge bestseller. And, of course, he hosts the Bill O'Reilly Show. Bill, great to have you. Thanks for having me in, Buck. I really appreciate it. So I, I want I got a lot of questions I got to ask you about politics. But first, let's just, Killing Crazy Horse, some of your other topics, I think people, they think of Jesus, Lincoln, okay, biggest figures you know in in our history why crazy horse well this is the ninth killing book the uh most successful nonfiction book series of all time 17 million copies of my books in print and i'm writing primarily for the american citizen who loves his or her country and wants an honest appraisal of it so if you look at all of my books outside of jesus that's the theme and the big gap that people don't know about is what happened between 1813 and 1890, 77 years of conflict between Native Americans and Washington, D.C. So how did it unfold? Who were the heroes? Who were the villains? Who did what to whom? We don't know. I was a, a history teacher, high school history teacher. I didn't know until I started to research the book with Martin Dugard, my co-author. And I went, are you kidding me? This really happened? So we give you all the big names, Cochise, Crazy Horse, Sitting Bull, Geronimo, Chief Joseph, Tecumseh. We tell you what happened to them, what kind of people they were. And then we uh, go over the white section from uh, Andrew Jackson, who put down the Creek Rebellion, all the way up to Grover Cleveland, uh, the immortal Grover Cleveland. <laughs> so you read this book, Killing Crazy Horse, you're going to know what happened in your country, and therefore you're going to be able to counter the far-left propaganda that is trying to dismantle our nation right now. Yeah, there's not a lot. I mean, there's Bury My Heart at Wounded Knee. There, there are a few books that deal with this period in American history, but there should be a lot more. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that you tackled this one, especially as we get into this uh, rewriting of history that's going on with the left. And with that, yeah. Bill, I, w I wanted to transition, if I could, into... What are the what is the the primary dynamic you see right now for the folks who are still uh, who are still open to changing their mind in this election? I mean, you're speaking to an audience of mostly but not entirely conservatives. But how do you think the Trump administration is positioning itself right now for those persuadables? I mean, is the messaging right? Are we handling these issues the right way? I think President Trump's making a lot of mistakes. I think he could lose. Um, to me, as an independent and somebody who's known Donald Trump for 30 years, I wrote a history book on him, The United States of Trump, which is b the best um, book on Trump, if you really want to understand him. I think he's making too many mistakes. I mean, you have a country that is divided, but it's not portrayed accurately by the corrupt media. So if you listen to the media, if you watch the networks and cable news, you think, oh, everybody, everybody uh, despises Donald Trump. He's a liar. He's this. He's that. That's not true. So when Mr. Trump goes on TV or buys ads and he touts his record, his record's pretty strong. I mean, it is. You want to blame him for COVID? All right, fine. Go blame him for COVID. But you have to blame Macron in France, Modi in India, uh, everybody else, because they're all experiencing tremendous backlash on COVID. So to me, as an American, I don't feel deceived on COVID. As far as the economy is concerned, I mean, we just got numbers today from the Census Bureau that says the median income in America had the largest rise in its history under President Trump before COVID. I mean, that's pretty good to me. I mean, you know, everybody benefits and poverty dropped a single percentage point, which is a huge drop. These are all facts. So the president, unfortunately, wanders. He wanders. And, and by wandering, he gives the corrupt media much opportunity to demonize him. And the voters who are not well-informed hear that. And that could influence the election. However, the big day is September 29th, because the pressure is on Joe Biden to see if he can perform in a cogent manner and he's not 
befuddled, which he has been much of the time so far. Do you think it's a it's a fair hit? I mean, you're you're somebody who doesn't pull punches, but also you don't like cheap shots. Do you think that the cognitive decline issue with Biden is already well enough established in the public eye that 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 should be uh, an, an area that's a it's a fair area of attack, area of attack and should be one for the Republicans? I don't I don't see it as an attack. I see it as a problem. If you listen, Buck, and I know you have because I listen to your program. If you listen to what Joe Biden said about COVID in the military in Michigan last week. It's frightening. He did not know what he was saying. If you and I make a mistake, we usually know that we made a mistake and we correct it. Or it's a little mistake. Not him. The entire description that he gave about COVID in the military was so far off, he couldn't even say numbers. He, and he was reading it. He couldn't even read it. So this isn't an attack on Joe Biden. It's an observation. This is a problem <laughs> yeah. that yeah. the Democratic nominee for president has. Yeah, it, it, it's amazing. And we're speaking of Bill O'Reilly, author of Killing Crazy Horse, one of uh, the, the latest in his long series of bestsellers, looking back into important parts, important characters in history. And, of course, you all know the Bill O'Reilly show. Uh, Bill, the the law and order issue from the very beginning of this after George Floyd's protests, I was saying, don't bend the knee, this BLM stuff. We've seen this before. We've actually been through this before under the Obama administration, as you know. And it somehow seems like Democrats are almost surprised that this has come back to bite them in the polls, which has become obvious in the last few weeks. Do you think that this is the liability that could tip the election? Or do Democrats feel like they make up, they, they make more from their base on this than they lose with the independents by, by pushing this, this movement that I think is just bad for everybody, honestly? The violence issue in America is of help to Donald Trump. So you've got two prongs. You have the loony, destructive maniacs who are attacking Portland, Oregon, Seattle, Minneapolis, Kenosha, Wisconsin, on and on. That's one. Then you have the roving drug gangs in New York, in Los Angeles, in Chicago, who are literally gunning down children in the streets. And the mayors and governors of those places will not control the violence. That's a huge issue for Donald Trump. Because he will, and has, when the guard was sent into Kenosha, because the governor of Wisconsin asked for it, the guard stopped the violence there in hours, not days, hours. I had called for the National Guard to be sent into Chicago six years ago. And if it had been, thousands of African-American lives would have been saved. But the idiot governor of Illinois, Pritzker, who is one of the most incompetent people I've ever seen, um, refused to do it, and Rahm Emanuel, then mayor of Chicago at the time, was a blithering idiot. So all of that has to be put into some kind of perspective by President Trump, and he can then persuade people on that issue. COVID, I think, is a loser for him at this point. He should just keep quiet about it and just say, look, I did the best I could. Everybody makes mistakes in a situation like that, but we've got a vaccine coming, and that's it. He's not going to win on COVID, but on law and order, he will. Bill, before we let you go, and everyone should check out Killing Crazy Horse. I'm going to make sure I get a copy of it. We'll get one for producer Mark uh, as well. But, Bill, I, I want to know what is the biggest if if Biden wins, which big if, but it's possible, as we both know. What's your biggest concern about what you think realistically can happen to this country as a result? Uh, I think if uh, Joe Biden wins the presidency, there'll be a severe recession and perhaps a depression. Now, Trump said that last night in his town hall. Uh, I have said it for months. We know the president gets a transcript of what I say on BillOReilly.com every day. Uh, I believe that. Because you raise taxes on corporations, they're going to do exactly what they did under President Obama. They're going to go overseas. 
because there are companies that will give them a much more favorable play. And as everybody knows, you can do business anywhere worldwide now. That's number one. I fear a severe recession. The second thing is Joe Biden is not going to be in control. And we, the American people, are not going to know who is calling those shots. Now, I suspect it will be members of the Obama administration, like David Axelrod, those kinds of people. But I don't know. And the socialism and the far-left Bernie Sanders bros, they're going to take on a lot of power. And if the Republicans lose the Senate, my God, this country and its traditions are going to be destroyed. That's what you're voting for. Bill O'Reilly, everybody, Killing Crazy Horse, out now. Make sure you get your copy of it and go to BillOReilly.com, download a show, listen to it there. Bill, great to have you on, sir. We'll talk to you soon. I hope so, Buck. Thanks for having me in. Hey, Team Buck, thank you so much for watching The First on YouTube. If you like this video, please click that little thumbs up button so then it will log as liked. And also, if you want to see more great content from The First, please click subscribe.